I'm Anna Jones. I'm the teacher specialist in charge of the Magnet Grant at Franklin Elementary School in Glendale, where we teach Italian immersion, German immersion, and Spanish immersion. We have no kindergarten English class this year. Everyone opted to do immersion just on their own. So the school is becoming a full language immersion. The English is um, phasing out of our school eventually. Um, I guess the most positive thing that I want to share is that our school was going to, well, it was being looked at as for the possibility of being closed down by the district because we were in declining enrollment. We were a very small school, but under the current social and economic situation, you know, it is difficult to keep schools open. And we were having almost under 200 kids that were local kids at, at the school. Uh, we started in 2007 with less than 300 students, as the newspaper said. And um, so it was um, due to the fact that some German parents came to the district after they had seen the Korean program that was uh, grant funded in our district. They said, oh, well, we want a German program. And we said, well, bring us some lists of people that are interested. So um, sure enough, they did. They brought lists of, of students and parents that were interested in, in taking this on, but that was only a class of 20 students at the time. So then we thought, well, wow, this is really cool. We should do more of this. So we had a high Hispanic population. We thought we should um, have them also included. So the following year, we opened up our Spanish class, um, and we opened up an Italian as well, because um, one of the parents in the program was a, is a professor at Cal State LA, and she came up with a list for the school district of two years worth of, of parents that were interested in doing this. So the district thought, well, okay. So I, we're very blessed that. It was very positive for us. Um, the school now is a magnet school. We wrote a grant um, to make it so, and so we're uh, under a lottery, and we have a waiting list a mile long of people dying to get in. Um, so I, I, you know, that's very positive for me. I think the challenging thing has been trying to educate all the parents and the families and the and school board members and the school and everything. We have a, an extremely supportive school board, um, and it's been a pleasure to work with them. But you know, they they realize the value, and they're extremely. I mean, Glendale Unified is extremely good about really putting kids first and really doing what they think is right for kids and they really listen very well to the parents and the parents' needs. So in essence, they've opened up a lot of programs in Glendale this year. We have two Korean immersion. We have one Japanese immersion. Mike is here. He's a, our, one of our Japanese teacher specialists. And, um, and we have two Armenian uh, and we have um, two Spanish now opening up the third. So. Uh, we are growing, um, and I, I can see us growing even further. We're going, looking at junior high now, and we've done some classes in junior high, so that's been great. The, the biggest obstacle, I think, is getting qualified teachers that are, um, especially in the Italian and the German. It's much harder to get a teacher, and we only hire teachers with the, the appropriate credentials to make it you know, highly qualified. So um, that is the reason that I only have one class. German and Italian, we want a quality program. And so that's one of our biggest challenges, that and, and just making sure that everyone's informed of what our programs are. So I take a lot of time with my tours. I give hundreds of tours um, during the year. Well, thank you. That sounds like your enthusiasm was what overcame your problems. I love <laughs> that's it. A nice. My enthusiasm is because I would do it for my child. I mean, my daughter, my baby's graduating from Yale Law School. But she, and she said to me, Mom, why didn't you do this yeah. for me? And she knows four languages now. You know, not, she was immersed in one of them. But, um, you know, it, it's just, it opens doors. And so I think people do see my passion when they come to school on the tours. Because I, I, I absolutely would do, and not just Spanish, but any one of the languages for my ch child. It's just a, a wonderful opportunity. And children learn languages so much easier when it's under the age of 10. And, yeah. Great. Thank you so much. I'm going to ask if you would pass that microphone over so that we can get um, Carmen appropriately mic'd. And Carmen, yes. again, if you could just introduce yourself briefly, tell us about your enthusiasm for immersion, and if you could cite an example of something that you've, that you've overcome. Yeah, that I'm, the old, I'm the old man out here. Okay. I, I guess that the reason I'm here is because 
you were probably talking about Simona Montanari when you spoke about uh, an Italian uh, yes. parent who started the, the program in Italian immersion. Well, Simona wrote her PhD dissertation under my guidance. Mm -hmm. I know. It <laughs> is a small world she, after all. It's a small world. <laughs> she couldn't be here today, so she asked me whether I would come and talk about my research on bilingual language acquisition, which is what I do. I'm a professor at the University of Southern California, I'm a professor of linguistics, and also of Spanish. So uh, that's my background. And um, when I asked, well, what would you like me to talk about, they told me, why don't you talk about the importance of language learning in the early years of a child's life? So I'd like to continue with uh, what you just said about uh, how important it is to start a uh, second language before age 10. In fact, there is something that we call the uh, critical period hypothesis, which uh, um, proposes that there's a critical period or a lim limited time during which people are more likely to be able to acquire a particular type of knowledge. Uh, and in the case of language, it is particularly important. Now it's said, I mean, the, the, the answer is not definitive, that that critical period for the acquisition of the language as a native language ends at about puberty. So um, I've always been saying, you know, that in my undergraduate classes at uh, USC, uh, once you leave uh, school, when you have children, try and start your children learning a second language, any second language, when they are really young, you know, age four, five, kindergarten, and on, because beyond puberty, no one's going to perhaps be able to. You, you, I mean, I started learning English when I was 18, and I can speak English, but you can all tell that I'm not native, and not only that, but uh, I have lived in this country for over 30 years, so it would be a shame if I couldn't speak the language. But, um, Really, those are, I mean, one of the main things I wanted to, to talk about today was that critical period hypothesis and how important it is to start the teaching and the learning on another, on a, of another language at an early age. Uh, the other issue that uh, concerns me, um, well, as a grandparent rather than a, a researcher, is the fact that when a child doesn't have a sufficient amount of input in this second language at home, then that child is going to lose the language of his or her ancestors unless they get support in school. So the educational system has to offer the possibility of courses that will strengthen the minority language, that will strengthen the language at the home, otherwise we'll lose that resource. I mean, the children will lose it. And I have, I wanted to show you some examples of conversations I've held with children who acquired Spanish from their grandparents rather than from their parents, because the parents were already speaking English at home. Right. English and Spanish, but the parents were the ones that were speaking in Spanish more consistently with the children. And I mean, their Spanish is, is pitiful. <laughs> no. Why? Because they never had the opportunity to go to a dual language school. They started in an English-only school at age five or five and a half, and their Spanish then became frozen. And the same would apply to any other language, not just Spanish.